Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on endometriosis. It is defined as the presence of ectopic endometrial tissue in sites other than the uterine mucosa. It is not a neoplastic condition, but malignant transformation is possible. These are some of the possible sites of endometriosis, which can di be divided into pelvic area and extra pelvic area. So within the pelvis, the endometrial tissue can be found in the ovary, which we also call as endometrioma, in the pelvic peritoneum, pouch of Douglas, uterus sacral ligaments, bladder, and so on. Whereas for extra pelvic areas, can be found within umbilicus or other places such as pleural cavity, the lung, the breast, liver, and even the extremities. So there are a few theories which could explain the endometriosis. The first theory is the metastatic theory, where it states that there is retrograde menstruation, where during menstruation, the blood containing the endometrial cells pass the tubes and enter the pelvic cavity and may be implanted there and then continue to grow during each menstrual cycle. Whereas the second theory is vascular spread to explain the spread of the endometrial tissue to distant sites such as the liver and lungs. Third theory is silomic metaplasia, where adult cells from different sites in the body may have been induced to undergo differentiation back to the primitive origin before transforming into the endometrial cells. This theory can be used to explain endometriosis in any sites. So these are some of the risk factors of endometriosis which includes uterine or genital tract outflow abnormalities, nulliparity or delayed childbirth, longer duration of menstruation and also heavy menstruation, exposure to environmental toxins, and also family history of endometriosis. For clinical features, there are three main clinical features of endometriosis, where it consists of a triad of deep dyspareunia, subfertility, and also dysmenorrhea. Dyspareunia means there is pain during sexual intercourse, whereas dysmenorrhea means that there is pain during menstruation. These are overall the symptoms that might be found in endometriosis. Some patients may be asymptomatic, and other symptoms such as dysmenorrhea, menorrhagia where there is heavy menstrual bleeding, premenstrual spotting, infertility and dyspareunia, and they may also have chronic pelvic pain or abdominal pain. There are also other symptoms that involve other systems such as the genital urinary tract where there is frequency, dysuria or cyclical hematuria. Involve the gastrointestinal tract where there is painful defecation or cyclical rectal bleeding or melina. And it can also involve the chest where there is cyclical chest pain and hemoptysis. So this cyclical means that every month during menstruation, during each cycle there will be pain or bleeding. On physical examination, we can do abdominal examination. It may not reveal any abnormalities, but we may also feel a mass arising from the pelvis, which is tender and non-mobile, suggesting for endometrioma. Another examination is to do the pelvic examination and bimanal examination. They might not have any abnormalities, but if there are positive findings, they may be pelvic tenderness, with unilateral or bilateral adnesal mass of varying sizes, a nodular field of uterosacral ligaments and at the pouch of Douglas, and a fixed retroverted uterus. For investigations, we can do serum CA125. This is to rule out epithelial ovarian malignancy. Transvaginal ultrasound, MRI and CT scan, are useful in presence of adnesal mass or pelvic mass. And in MRI, we may be able to see rectal vaginal endometriosis. On ultrasound, we can look for endometrioma, where there will be a thick wall with heterogeneous ground glass appearance. The diagnostic investigation is visualization of endometrial deposits within the pelvis by using laparoscopy. And other investigations that we can do when we suspect to have deep involvement of other organs, we can do colonoscopy, cystoscopy for the bladder, and also rectal ultrasound. 
these pictures show some of the possible laparoscopic findings. So the first picture shows red lesion on the peritoneum. Second picture shows black matchstick lesions. This can be seen over the ovaries, serosa or peritoneum. And the third picture shows white fibrous lesions. These are the laparoscopic findings of endometriosis. Other than that, we, can, we might also be able to see endometrioma and also intestinal endometriosis. For management of endometriosis, we can divide it into medical and surgical. For medical, we can give NSAIDs for pain relief and also hormonal therapy to induce pseudo-pregnancy state or pseudo-menopausal state. And some of the hormonal therapy we can give are progestogen, danazole, gestrinone, Depo, COCP, and also levonorgestrel intrauterine device. So that's for medical management. If there is an endometrioma where there is endometrial tissue present in an ovary, medical treatment will not be enough, and the main choice would be surgery. Some of the indications for surgery include if the symptoms correlate to endometriosis and the medical therapy failed, we can choose surgery, or there is a large endometrioma or ruptured endometrioma, or the patient is planning for pregnancy. These are the indications to choose surgical management. So for conservative surgery, this is to aim for removal and destruction of all the endometrial implants. Cystectomy of the endometrioma can be done. Excision of endometriotic nodules can be done as well. Whereas for radical surgery, can do total abdominal hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo ophorectomy, TAPSO. When do we do this radical surgery? It is done when there is recurrence of endometriosis or there are persistent symptoms and the family is completed already where the patient does not desire for any childbirth in the future or they are more than 40 years old with endometrioma present. So that's all for this video. Thank you.